I'm two-time Olympian and world champion speed skater Joey Mantia here with episode four of Skate Tips, a series dedicated to teaching you how to skate faster, longer. Today's tutorial is focused on skate setup and specifically your frame placement. Now, I'm gonna do my best to cover everything that I know about frame placement, all the way from general setup to crooked mounting blocks to wheels rubbing on boots and everything in between, and that means this video might get a little bit long, so if there's something in particular you're looking for, check the description, You'll see a table of contents. You might be able to hop right to the section you want, but I do recommend trying to watch the entire video because some sections might reference others. Now, if you get done with this video and there's something I didn't answer for you, leave it in the comments and I'll do my best to do a follow-up video. That way there are no questions left unanswered when it comes to setting up your skates. And if at any point you find this helpful, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll get right into it, starting with what you'll need to get your skates set up. Okay, starting off with the obvious, you need both boots. You do not have to have your laces in, although you will need to put them in when you go skate and test the setup. You need both of your frames, all of your axles, all of your wheels with the bearings and spacers already installed, ready to go. And ideally, your wheels will be new enough to where you can still easily identify this center line that runs right down the middle. That way you can use it as a point of reference to make sure that your frame is in a nice, precise position. Have all of your hardware on deck, ready to go. Try to use the hardware that came with the boots because not every manufacturer uses the same thread type and bolt type. So ideally you're using what came with your skates. If not, you can find stuff that will fit from a hardware store. Just make sure that you contact the manufacturer to get the thread type right and the bolt head right and everything to spec. You wanna make sure that you know what type of hardware you have. That way you can match it with the proper tool. This, for example, traditionally is a four millimeter Allen. If you look at it, it looks like a six-sided polygon, and this will say four millimeters. Hopefully you have a Allen wrench that has a T. This is much easier to use than like an L-shaped Allen wrench. So try to get a hold of one of these. That's four millimeters if you have a four millimeter head. If you have a power slide setup, this is a four millimeter Torx. It looks like a star. Some people call it a star wrench. You do not want to use a star wrench on an Allen head and you can't even use an Allen uh, wrench on a star bolt, so you don't have to worry about going that way. Also, keep in mind, if it says four millimeter, five millimeter, six millimeter, for example, it is metric, and if it has a fraction, it is standard or imperial, and you do not want to mix an imperial or standard tool with a metric bolt. That is a big no-no. Even if you think it fits okay, it will end up ruining the bolt and stripping things out, so make sure you're using the exact tool for the exact hardware you have. That is very important. You wanna make sure you have some tape, a marker. You want to grab yourself a hand towel or some kind of cardboard just to where if you have exposed mounting blocks like this, you're not gonna scratch your floor when you put your skate down on the floor to try to find the specific spot we're gonna look for. And if you want, you can have some thread locker. Now. Some bolts come with thread locker on them. You can see that's this red or blue colored stuff on your threading of your bolts. And that just makes sure that the bolts stay more secure over time, that the vibration of the road and things like that don't work that bolt back out. It's not something you have to have. It's something I like to use, but it is not necessary. When it comes to washers, I don't think you need washers, although I will cover the different types of washers and if you do really want to use them, how to use them, but it's not something that's necessary. And if you're gonna use your own bolts, make sure that the head is big enough to where it's actually gonna have a good amount of bite on to your frame, that it's not so small like this, that it's gonna slip right through or end up breaking your frame because it's not having enough what's called purchase, that's contact between the head of the bolt and the bottom of your frame. So make sure you have all those things on deck and we'll get right into the process of setting up your skates. There's a few things you need to determine before you get started. The first is which frame is going to go on which boot. Now that seems kind of like a stupid thing, but for example, these frames are printed in mirrors. So the label is a logo on one side and the text of the logo on the other side, and it's mirrored. So it depends on what I want visible to the outside of my skates that will determine which frame goes on which side. Now, sometimes there are two different frames. There is a designated right and a designated left, and you can tell that because the axles will be able to be changed or accessible from the insides of both of those frames. For example, right now, this is essentially a single molded frame, so both these frames are identical, it's just printed differently, so the labels look different. But sometimes there are actually two different frames and it will be a mirror image, so both of the axles will be 
accessible from the inside. So when you change your wheels, you don't have to flip one foot to the outside and have that awkward, weird motion. But that is a lot more expensive. Most manufacturers do not do that and I don't blame them, but just be aware that that is a thing. So if both of your axles are accessible, so if they both go in from the insides of your frames, then that means you have a designated right and a designated left. And you need to make sure you set those up accordingly. And the best way to do that is once you identify which ones go where, is to take your left boot and put it with your left frame and take your right boot and put it with your right frame. So once you've determined which frame goes with which boot, you've set them apart so they don't get mixed up, then you have to determine if you have to actually find out where the center point of your boot and frame are for yourself or if the manufacturer already did that for you. For example, this bump has a sliding mount that's lateral in conjunction with a sliding mount hole on the frame. So there is no messing this up. If you have a bump frame on a bump boot, in theory, when you set it up, you should be centered from the boot to the frame. You shouldn't have to worry about anything. You just go. All you have to worry about is where your frame is set up here on your boot. But if you have a system like this with a Simmons with an aluminum block that has nine different holes, it's up to you to determine are you going to use the front holes, the middle holes, or the back holes, and where you're going to put that. So the best way to do that, in my opinion, is to start off by just using the middle hole with the middle hole of the frame and line them up, set it on the table without actually shifting anything forward and back, take a step back, and just eyeball it. For me, if I can give you guys some contrast, hopefully on this black shirt, you can see that the front of this boot is closer to the front of the frame than the back is to the back. There's more distance here than there is here. So I'm gonna reset, I'm gonna use the front holes of this boot now and check it again, and then see if that gets me any closer to where I wanna be. So I'm lining up the front hole now with the only hole in the frame. Line them both up front and back. The left, right doesn't really matter here as long as you're getting the forward and back lined up correctly. And I'm gonna sit back, and this looks much better to me. It looks like this is more equidistant to this, and that's what I'm going for. So in my head, I make a note. I'm gonna use the front hole when I go to mount this frame on this boot. Now, is one better than the other? That depends. If you're a person that likes to set it and forget it and just rely on the manufacturer to do the work for you, this is a better option. And I do suggest that you match your frame and your boot from the same maker. If you are a tinkerer and you like to do all kinds of crazy stuff with your boots and frames and move them all around, this is probably a more viable option for you. But in my experience, there is nothing wrong with this as long as the manufacturer does a good job at building everything like they're supposed to. And setting these frames up over the last few weeks, I've had no issues. So it just depends on what you're looking for, what you already have, if you're trying to mix boots with different frames. Keep all this in mind that Sometimes a boot has a vertical sliding mount. So instead of it sliding this way, it slides this way forward and back. And then you mix that with a sliding mount left and right of your, of your frame. And you can pretty much put that thing anywhere you want, but then that's more options to mess it up. So depending on what kind of person you are, you have to make that decision. Just be aware that you want this boot as centered on this frame as possible when you're going into the next part of the setup. So if you do have a boot that has a sliding mount that slides forward and back, unlike this one, which slides left to right, then you're gonna wanna take this extra step to make sure that you have a good lineup and a good point of reference when you go to mount all this together. Because if you have a boot that has a sliding mount forward and back and the frame can move left and right, it's gonna be darn near impossible to try to get that perfect with a 360 degree movement without having some kind of reference point. So set up, your boot and your frame like this, tape on the top of the mounts and tape on the boot where they can line up essentially right next to each other. And then take a step back and just try to eyeball your, your boot and your frame of where you think it should be. And then once that's done, you're going to want to just put a single mark between the two, right there and right there. I'm just going to use a single dot that keeps it the most simple. And that way, when I go to set up my boot, I know that the center point forward and back is by lining up those dots. That's all I gotta do. Now, realistically, you only have to do one or the other, the front or the back, but I like to do both just for good measure in case the tape falls off or something like that. And now I have this point of reference when I go to actually mount, I can check the side before I actually tighten down the bolt and make sure that those points are lined up and I do have a good front and back center mount before I actually move forward. So now let's talk about position of the frame left, right. And that's probably the main reason you're here watching this video is how do I set my frame up on my boot like that to get the most out of my skates? And it's a little bit tricky because one, it's a personal preference a little bit because you're trying to find the balance point based on your own physiology. You want to find 
where your foot is inside your boot and you feel like you're one with your wheels and you're controlling them all the time. And that's gonna be almost impossible if the boot isn't good enough to support all that. If you have a boot that's too big or too small or too low cut, or it's not stiff enough to actually stop against your foot to give you something to push with, then the frame position is going to be really, really tough to dial in because your boot's always gonna just be moving around and never gonna give you the real feedback that you need. Now, whether you have a really high cut boot like this or a super low cut boot like this or like this, it doesn't really matter. It just, in my experience, it's a lot more finicky to get a frame position right with a lower cut boot versus a higher cut boot. For example, this boot fits me like a glove. It is extremely tight and it's really low cut and it's not the stiffest boot ever, but it's stiff enough. I spent more time setting that boot up and I do really, really like those skates versus this bot, which I got and I just put by the general strategy I'm gonna show you guys next of how to find the sweet spot of the initial setup. And I haven't moved it since and I've skated quite a bit with this thing and I feel really good about it. And this fits a little bit more comfortable than something like this, but I was able to find the frame position because this boot is a little bit higher and a little bit stiffer than this. So the boot really determines how finicky the frame position is going to be and how long you're gonna to have to actually spend on that. And it is personal physiology that determines all that, but I'm gonna give you a road guide here to get you going in the right direction and give you a plan of action of how to get to the best possible frame setup for yourself. Let's start off by taking the right boot and go ahead and put that on. Make sure it is your right because we're gonna set these boots up a little bit different from the right to the left. So I got my skate on. I did not put down a towel because I don't care about my floors, but if you do, I highly recommend you put down a towel or cardboard so you don't scratch the floor with the boot making contact. Here, you don't really need to tie your skates. I'm just gonna buckle this down a little bit to make sure that my heel is set back in the back of my boot and that my toes are actually gonna be where they probably would be if I did tie my skates. Now, it's up to you. If you wanna tie them for this process, you can to be a little more precise. I don't think it's necessary, but it's up to you. Grab your Allen tool and what you're looking for is the crease right between your big toe and your first toe or second toe, I guess that would be. Between the first toe and the second toe, big toe, second toe, this crease right here is what you're looking for on your foot. So using the edge of your tool, push down and try to find, that's my second toe, that's my big toe, and right between that little crease right there is right in there. And if you use this part of your tool, be very careful because sometimes it can slip around and stab you in the foot. And if you don't wanna ruin the leather on the front of your boot. I don't mind here because it's pretty much underneath the laces. It's never gonna be seen. You can easily grab a piece of tape that you have and throw it on your skate. Once you find the approximate placement of that crease between your big toe and your second toe. And from there, you can use the tool again. You can use your finger to try to find that spot. And once you do, you can see that little indent that I created. I'm just gonna come with the marker and put a little dot right where that crease is. And now I have a reference point of where I want my front wheel to be lined up with on my boot. From here, I can take my skate off and we'll move to the next step. Now that you have your reference point on your boot, you need to grab your right frame and mount a wheel on the front and a wheel on the back, both going the same direction, just in case that center line that runs right down the middle of each of your wheels is off by a little bit for some reason. It shouldn't be, but if it is, you want it to be off by the same amount left and right, just so you get the most precision out of setting this frame up and using your wheels as a reference point. So it doesn't matter if you have a four wheel or three wheel frame, one in the front, one in the back, and make sure they're both going the same direction and set that frame to the side. Once you get that done, you're gonna take your boot and you're gonna lay it in your lap with the heel towards you and the toe away from you, and you're gonna hold it right between your legs. Before you put your boot in your lap and control it with your legs, you wanna make sure that these sliding nuts are actually accessible. So make sure you have a tool handy, a toothpick or an Allen wrench or something that you can actually fish these little guys out of the sides if they are stuck in there and get something like this so they're actually accessible. Once they're in a good spot, then you can put your boot down between your legs, grab your frame, make sure you identify the back as the back and the front as the front, line it up accordingly. Okay, once I get that on top and I'm able to see straight down through the frame and into the nut, I'm gonna grab a bolt, grab my tool, make sure it's secured on the end. I'm gonna use the opposite hand index finger to just hold that bolt and go straight down through. Make sure that I'm getting right into the nut there. 
And I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the back side. So grabbing the bolt, grabbing the tool, putting the bolt on the tool, using the opposite hand's index finger to control that straight down into the nut. And I'm just gonna give it a couple turns to where it's pretty loose, but that frame isn't coming off. And then I can move on to the next step. Now the bolts are threaded into the nuts, at least enough to where the frame is not gonna come off, or in the case of a Simmons type boot, they're threaded into the blocks. You have to ballpark estimate the back, center it up and just snug it up to where it's not moving around. We'll come back and find adjust it later, but to get started and make sure that we can actually put this where we want it in the front, you can't have the back moving around as well. So the best way I found to do this in a pinching motion with your thumb and your index finger, just pinch right between the middle point of that back mounting block where the boot comes down on the heel and your frame. And you can kind of feel it out and make sure that it's as close to center as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just for ballpark, you want it somewhere near the center line, snug it up. And that way it's, it's going to give you an actual ability to put this front where it's supposed to be. Now you want to line this line up from the wheel in a way that if it were to continue on through your boot, it would go right through that dot that you made that represents the crease right here on your foot. So looking at the boot from what would be your perspective straight down, I'm gonna flip it around, do the same thing, eyeball it, I'm gonna close one eye, I'm gonna pretend that line just continues on and get it as close as I can. Don't have to be fanatical about this, you're gonna spend the next few weeks fine adjusting these anyways. And then before you actually snug this bolt down, try to get it, if you have a sliding mount that allows that bolt to move left and right, try to get that bolt to be lined up dead in the middle of that frame. You don't want it off to one side or the other because the best possible contact is gonna be right in the middle. So just for good, good measure, put that thing in the middle before you crank down on it. We're gonna go back to the back of the boot. And now that I'm satisfied where the front is, I have to fine check and make sure the back is also where it's supposed to be. Now. In my experience, I find the best thing to do is to use the heel cup as the reference point. Some people like to use the Achilles. It's not always the same. And if you do like to use the Achilles, it doesn't mean you're wrong. This is just my personal experience of how I like to do it and what has worked best for me. So I put one finger on the outermost point of those heel cups. Try to find them. At least this buckle is in the way a little bit. I'm going to loosen that so I can get there. So I put one finger on each side and then I can use that as a reference for my wheels or the wheel that's mounted. So I'm gonna to switch to my thumbs and do the same thing because I'm looking from the back. I'm gonna eyeball it. It looks pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied, which means the manufacturer did a great job making sure that mounting block was centered. And I'm going to loosen it up because it wasn't perfectly centered and make sure it's dead in the middle before I actually crank down on it. Now I'm satisfied with that. Those are good position mounting bolts right there. And as I go to tighten, I'm going to use a specific process that will help eliminate you rounding those bolts or stripping them as much as possible at least. So making sure that your tool is buried all the way down into the head of the bolt. Sometimes you can go halfway and just destroy that actual opening. You wanna make sure it's all the way in there and you can kind of wiggle this around to make sure it's seated all the way. Give it a little wiggle and make sure it's all the way in there. With one hand that's on the tool, you're gonna to push in and with the opposite hand, you're gonna create a sandwich, accordion type push and push together and create pressure in the middle and actually turn and push at the same time. That will ensure that this, this tool is settled all the way down and then it's not gonna back out as you're actually turning that bolt. Also, you wanna make sure that you don't go at the bolt at a weird angle. You wanna go perpendicular to the head of the bolt exactly straight down as you actually make that twisting motion. If you cock the, the tool down or up and create a weird angle, you're more likely to strip the head of that bolt. So again, settling it all the way down, creating that accordion and snugging up just enough to where I'm not gonna break anything, but I'm also very confident that it's not gonna come loose. I'm gonna repeat the same thing with the back. I'm gonna get into a point where I can create that good leverage between the boot and the frame, or the boot and the bolt and the tool. Twist, try not to change that angle at all, and now I'm satisfied with that. My bolts are in the middle, I can put my wheels on, and we can move on to the left skate. Now, for sake of time, when it comes to the left foot, even though it is different than the right, I'm not gonna go through the entire process because it's all about the same. The only thing that's different is where you put that reference point on the front of the boot. The back is still lined up right in the middle, how I had it. The front just depends on whether or not you are an indoor skater or skate a lot of track, 
or if you're more of a trail type skater and never have to worry about turning at all, will determine that point that you're trying to look for on your foot. Now with the right skate, we looked for the crease right here between the big toe and the second toe. With the left skate, because you're skating turns for the most part, if you're skating indoor and track a lot, you wanna look for the crease between your second and third toe, or even if you have a really wide foot, right on top of that third toe, right on top of the middle toe. So somewhere between this crease and this toe is kind of where you're hunting for, depending on how wide your foot is, and that's where it comes down to physiology, like I mentioned before. People with really skinny feet can get away with having their frame closer to how their, their right was set up on their left and still be able to skate pretty good turns. But if you have a really wide foot, you might have a hard time booting out or just finding that leverage and that balance if you don't move your frame more to the center of your skate. So if you are a trail guy only, I would recommend setting the skate up exactly the way you did on the right, finding that crease between the big toe and the second toe. If your corners, indoor, track, look for that crease between the second and third or even right on top of the third. So once you get your skates set up and you're ready to go out and skate, what's the plan of action? How do we get from this generalized setup that I've given you to something that's more specified for your physiology and that works the best for you? And that's a little bit tricky because there's a lot of variables that go into how you feel on your skates and it's not always just how your skates are set up. In my experience, and personally I've gone through this myself, the older I got through my career, the more I wanted to blame my skates for skating poorly because I thought there was no way it was me. It had to be my frame placement or my boots or something that was causing me to skate poorly. The reality is I just stopped training hard and I wasn't as flexible as I used to be. And I wasn't as tuned in on the balance of being on my skates like I was supposed to be to make everything work as effectively as possible. So there are variables up and variables down from this level meaning in your skates and in your body, that play a big role on how you feel. So always blaming your skates and trying to change everything every day is not the way to go. At some point, you have to set it in a generalized location and forget it, and you will get used to it. And the harder you train, the better you're gonna get. All that assuming that your boot is good enough to support that generalized frame position that I've given you. So, in my opinion, I think you should go out and skate for a week and not touch anything. Even if it feels awkward and weird, don't mess with it. Just skate, give yourself a chance to find balance on your skates, challenge yourself, even if it's not the most comfortable, challenge yourself to make your skates work. After a week, start paying attention to just your left or just your right skate. My suggestion is just the left because that's the harder one to get used to in terms of setting it up for turns and straightaways. Pay attention to, as you're skating on the trail or the track or indoor or whatever it is, if that boot feels like it's falling in on you, if that skate feels like as you push, it's just collapsing. If it does, that means your frame generally is too far to the outside of your boot. And that could be the back or the front or a combination of the two. Ideally, when you set up a frame, you're looking for a nice balance across your whole skate. So something that gives you a point where you feel like you can fine tune that balance back and forth between the edges of your wheels. If you always feel like you're flopping one way or the other, chances are your frame is too far outside of the direction it's flopping. So moving in, it's too far out. If it feels like you can never get it to fall in and it's always forcing you this way, that means the frame is too close to you, too close to your center of gravity. You need to move something out to try to find a better balance point. Now, as you make these fine tuned adjustments and you're paying attention after that first week of just setting it, forgetting it, you have to pay attention. Do you feel like the front or the back is falling in or it's too hard to actually get onto the edge? And that will help you determine where you start moving things first. You can also look at the bottom of the boot and kind of give yourself a general feel. Does it look like the front of my frame is too far to one side or the other? And if so, that can kind of give you a starting point. Like if you look at the bottom of this, for example, it looks like the front of this frame is a little bit this way. And if I were to feel like I couldn't get this to actually fall into the turns like I wanted it to, or it wasn't really getting onto the wheels like I wanted it to, it was forcing me out, then I would just move the front of this frame a millimeter out and test it for another week and see how that goes. Now, as I mentioned before, it doesn't matter what your frame placement is if your boot doesn't support any of this. If it's not good enough, if it's not tall enough, if it's not stiff enough, if it doesn't fit you well enough, no amount of frame placement or shimming or anything is gonna make up for that. So keep that in mind if you're looking for this magical aha shim, move it all around, your best bet is to spend some money on a good boot and start from there and it will change your life. So starting from the beginning, 
spend a week not doing anything, just get used to your skates. After that, hone in on one skate, adjust it. Small mounts go a long way, one millimeter, two millimeter at the most. Skate on it for a few more days, make another adjustment, finalize it, move on to the other skate. After a month or two, you will have what is much closer to perfect for you and your balance points. And I think you'll be happier with that if you just spend the time and go through the process of taking your time with it. Eventually you will get set up where you want to be and you can just focus on the training and leave the skates to be. In this final section, I'm going to cover what you might run into when you're setting up your skates, things that might be roadblocks for you or just generalized questions that you might have about shims or lifts or things like that and how they affect your skate, if you should use them or if you shouldn't use them. And I will try to cover all the things that I've ever run into over the years. It might not be everything. Like I said, if I miss something, leave it in the comments. I'll try to come back to it. And I apologize if some of these things are a little generalized because I don't typically try to customize my skates too much. I think that simple is the best way to go. So starting off, we will hop right into shims. Should you use a shim system to essentially, move this out of the way, to make it so that your boot and your frame are no longer in a straight line, or if your boot is built crooked, how to fix that. And the reality is, if your boot is built crooked, you should go to the guy who built it and say, this thing is built crooked, you should make me a new one. That is the reality because Shimming it is, is going to fix maybe one part of the problem, but it's gonna create another. For example, if your boot is built crooked and the front part of the boot is kind of cocked to the side and the ankles are straight up and down, then you're never gonna feel great. And that's my experience. I've had boots that are pretty bad where the front is just twisted to the side or the front part of my boot hangs over the edge or whatever, and it just, no amount of shims or anything I ever done to those boots, and that includes heating them up and trying to push things in in weird spots, has ever made a huge difference in the long run. It's always been that I just need a new boot that fits better, that is made better. So when it comes to shims, you can fix some very, very, very minor things in terms of something being off by a little bit. But if your boot is noticeably off, if you can look at it from the back and it looks like it's crooked off to one side or the other, it's gonna be tough. And the amount that you actually have to shim is gonna create a lot of problems for you because when you create aggressive shims, so for example, if I take this flat washer, just as an example, and I put it under here, that probably creates two or three degrees of actual cant in my boot. The problem with that is when I put this mounting bolt into the bottom of that boot, now it has three degrees of cant as well. And it's gonna pull crooked against the bottom of this frame. And especially today with frames being made out of carbon more and more, that's gonna put a lot of weird stress on that mount and it's probably gonna crack your frame unless you are able to use the same kind of cant underneath and create another flat surface. So in my opinion, I've never been a crazy fan of using shims and cants and I know that a lot of people out there wanted to hear the secret to it, but in my opinion, if you have to use them, your boot isn't made correctly or if you're trying to use it to fix a pronation, you should really think about what is actually going on from your ankle all the way through your center of mass. Because usually if you have a pronation, your knee will fall in also. So if your ankle collapses, your knee will collapse and the whole chain will start having these big problems. The reality is you want straight lines. So if you draw a line from your ankle through your knee and through your hip and through your center of mass, your belly button, it should be pretty straight. And if you just shim your boot to fix what's going on at the ankle, that doesn't fix your knee having a problem. It doesn't fix the hip being out of line. So you wanna to try to focus on how do you put yourself in a better position in terms of your own anatomy to create those straight lines to try to fix these problems versus just a shim or a cant in your boot. Doesn't mean you can't use them, but in my opinion, it is not worth it if you have to start doing things like that. Now, if you have your heart set on using shims or cants to actually change the camber angle between your frame and your boot, and it makes your skating experience more enjoyable or less painful because you have some kind of pronation or something going on, by all means do it. I'm just letting you know in my experience, it has never worked great for me, and anybody around me I've ever seen go down that rabbit hole, it ends up creating more problems than it solves. So, I prefer a traditional mount system with the boot on top of the frame, no camber, if the boot is made correctly, that should work for you. If you don't have any major medical problems, that should work for you. If you are gonna use shims, I recommend 
not using just a single side shim, for example, not using just a lift on one side of the frame or the other that creates a gap in between, that you're actually using a full wedge that's fatter on one side and skinnier and it tapers off evenly. And you use the same wedge on the front and the back and making sure you're getting the same angle in the front and the back. That way you get the most purchase, the most contact between your actual mount and your frame. And ideally in the best situation, because when you do create a camber that this bolt is now cambered as well, relative to this frame, you wanna to try to create a reciprocation of that cant underneath. That means taking your cant, flipping it upside down and trying to create a flat surface so when this bolt pulls through, it's actually pulling into the flat part of that shim. So it would be pulling through like this and the shim would be also at that angle and it pulls everything nice and flush like it's supposed to be. Also, Try to stay away from getting too aggressive with these. It can be easy to get carried away by just using hotel keys and cards and cutting them up, credit cards, things like that, and just stacking them up. I've been a victim of doing this before where I look at my boot and I say, oh, well, it's just not straight, it's not good. And I end up with this crazy lift on one side of my frame and it's just, it's outrageous. Ends up cracking frames, ends up breaking equipment. And like I said, creates more problems than it solves. So. If you have to do it, do it the right way with a actual wedge and not just shimming on one side or the other with something fat. Next, I wanna cover lifting your boot from your frame. So adding lifts between where your frame mounts to your boot and the boot, so in here, to make sure that you're not getting any rubbing from the second wheel. Sometimes when you have the second wheel in here and you mount a boot on a frame, it will rub and not let you actually skate. Usually, if you are getting a frame and a boot from the same manufacturer, you're not gonna run into that problem. But when you start mixing things like a Simmons and a Bont, you might run into that problem and have to actually create a little lift so you're not getting that rubbing. And you'll know it's rubbing because it gets really hot in the bottom of your boot. Or when you're changing your wheels, you can look and you'll see a line from this rubbing on the bottom of that carbon and just eating it up. It looks kind of like this, but this is a much more aggressive issue. This happened because I used a different manufacturer's frame with a Simmons boot and tried to fix it myself with the Dremel. In Dave Simmons' defense, this was a test boot to try to make everything as low to the ground as possible. You can see how low cut this is. We created this really low profile and this was really just a test boot for me to take and see if it actually worked. And so if you're getting a Simmons, you're probably not gonna run into that problem, at least not this aggressively, if you're, especially if you're using a Simmons frame. But if you are mixing and matching, sometimes you do have to put a little lift. If you do, you can use something like this, a big fat washer that creates a lot of surface area and gets you a nice contact between the washer, the frame, and the boot. And if you're going to, try to keep it equal from the front to the back. So if you're using one washer, it's one in the front, one in the back. If you're using two, two in the front, two in the back, and so on, because the difference between this and this, the height, is the same as the difference between this and this, and they're made to work together. If you start changing that, you get some weird things happening, and I don't recommend doing that. If, for example, you always feel like you're back on your heels and you think that tilting this forward is gonna help you, so putting a bigger lift in the heel versus the toe, I disagree. I think that the problem is your dorsiflexion, so your ability to bend your ankle forward and actually get your body in the right position versus fixing it with your skates. A lot of the problems, as I mentioned before, are also dealing with variables from the skates up in your body, not just how your skates are set up. So in my opinion, it's better to fix things from the root, the actual problem versus dressing it up with things like shims or big lifts in one part of the boot or one part of the frame versus the other to try to fix your problems. Just do it the right way and you'll be much happier in the long run. Now, the reason this becomes a problem or the reason that you would have any kind of rubbing from the second wheel on the bottom of your boot is because as we try to make skates better, we try to push the envelope on how low we can get this profile. How close can we get our foot to the ground? And that in turn will give us more control of our skates. This is one of the reasons I'm not crazy about 125s is because your point of leverage is so much higher. If your boot isn't really good, then it's really difficult to control your skates. And the same thing for any size wheels. So we try to make these as close to the ground as possible to make that leverage more controllable. and that would be my only suggestion for adding lifts is to try to fix this second wheel rubbing like this had a problem with. Now keep in mind, as you manipulate your skates and start adding lifts and shims and things like that, it's much less likely that the bolt that came from your manufacturer is going to work anymore because it's probably too short. You're gonna have to find a 
piece of hardware that's longer, something that has longer threads, because as you create more space between this and this, it's less likely you're gonna have enough threading going into your mounting nut or your mounting block, and it's gonna be dangerous. So you're gonna to have to go out and hunt down your own, own bolts and make sure that the same exact threading and that the bolt head is about the same size. Because if you go from something like this that has a pretty big bolt head to something like this, that would be a problem. Even though it stops and doesn't get pulled through, it's gonna destroy the bottom of this frame eventually, and it's gonna be pretty unsafe. If you do have to use something like this, make sure you grab yourself a washer to make up for that surface area. Obviously, these are not the correct hardware to be using for this type of situation. These are just examples of what you need to be doing. The only other reason you would use a washer other than the bolt head being too small is if you don't have a thread locker and you want to make sure that the bolt is not gonna come out from the bottom of your boot. It's not gonna work itself out from vibration. So you have a couple options with specialty lock washers. The first one would be an offset washer like this, looks like a mini little coil. And as the bolt gets tightened down, it just squishes that down, creates pressure between the two, and it makes it much less likely that anything is gonna back out from vibration. The other option is a star washer, and I highly recommend that you do not use this because it's probably going to just wreak havoc on the bottom of your frame, especially of a carbon frame, and just destroy it over time. Even if you have a metal frame, these little star washers I've seen do some pretty good damage to the bottom of a frame over years. It does its job, but at the cost of destroying your equipment. So I recommend using thread locker if you want something to give yourself a little more peace of mind that when you tighten this bolt in, it's gonna stay put. This is Loctite is the brand, Blue 242, it is removable. Try to stay away from anything permanent. You're gonna wanna change your skates at some point. Usually the permanent stuff still does come off, but you don't wanna chance that. So use something removable. It does a good enough job. Some of these bolts already come with thread locker on them, so it's not a problem. But that would be the only reason you would ever use washers, and I highly suggest that you don't, that you just use thread locker if you're gonna use anything. So in closing, this is just my personal account of what works for me and what has worked for me over the years, what has led me to many world titles. But that being said, there's been people I've trained with who have been very, very fast, who have had their frame in the most obscure position. So don't take what I say as black and white. Just because I say that you should put your frame in a certain way and start there, doesn't mean that that is absolutely the best thing for you. If you're looking for suggestions, this is my suggestion. So. In closing, if I could give you one piece of advice, it would be to pay attention to your boot and ask yourself, am I having problems setting up my frame because my boot isn't good enough or because my frame isn't in the right spot? And sometimes the answer is not what you want it to be because it's gonna cost you more money to buy a better boot, but that's the reality and that will help get you in the right direction if you can bite the bullet and get on equipment that's actually gonna be good for you, something like a nice custom boot, that's gonna make a big difference. And I can tell you from experience, there has been times where I had the worst boots. They were so bad and I couldn't keep up with the girls at practice and I was so frustrated. And a week later I get on a better boot and all of a sudden I'm the fastest guy in the world again. So it can be that dramatic of a difference. And if you're honest with yourself and you're actually answering the questions right, I think you'll end up finding that you'll put your equipment together in a way that will make it more enjoyable for you to be skating. So that's gonna do it for this episode of Skate Tips. I'm Joey Mantia. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will catch you next time.